It's the first day of spring and my first plein air of the year. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, I'm out in my own yard today because it was just absolutely beautiful. About 70 degrees and I'm trying to get in a little painting session here because it's supposed to turn colder towards the end of the week so I'm out here with my Kilimanjaro uh, spiral sketchbook paint book and I'm going to do a painting of a full pine tree to go on the page with the pine cone and the pine buds this is the etcher satchel the smaller one actually this is the slate and etcher satchel meet the portable painter yeah look at there i figured out a way to anchor the portable painter on that thing and it works great you know i love the way the little wells attach to the side of the portable painter but i don't really care to have open paint containers on my knee that's just another option you can use the portable painter for but i do love it and i'm just going to start right in painting i'm using a silver brush black velvet travel brush and you can see uh, the tree here and sorry for the shadow but the sun was at my back actually the floppy hat that I was wearing uh, gave me a nice sh shadow so I could get a more accurate picture of the color I was using so sometimes when you have the sun directly on your painting it, it can bias you know the color and stuff just a lovely beautiful day and I always start with trees by painting as if they're clouds um, that's probably a great tip and you start with the lightest clouds look if you look at a tree with a lot of foliage and this tree was very complex and you squint your eyes and just get your head out of the idea for a moment that you're looking at branches and pine needles and leaves and all that stuff you know I've talked about clumps of foliage as, as mass and another way to, to think of them is like clouds, colored clouds. And I always start with the lightest value clouds or clumps and uh, paint those in because that's easy. It's easy to see the lighter value. And I just added in the trunk. I'll probably detail a lot of the trunk later, but and I've added a few branches. But a lot of that uh, I'm doing right now just to orient where these clumps of foliage will go. And above that first clump of foliage, it's actually, uh, the trunk is actually very dark. So I'm putting it in light and we'll have a lot of options later for uh, deepening it or adding the deeper tones. And so you can see I've just carried uh, the painting on up the tree, uh, just picking out those lighter cloud shapes to stick with my analogy. It's going to be, it's going to look funny um, here when I'm done because it's going to look like that pine cone close up on the branch is a gigantic pine cone coming out of the tree. And I'll show you at the end what I did. I ended up going back with some white acrylic and painting a little vignette around that so it wasn't so confusing. But I mean, seriously, the, the cloud analogy works because uh, as you look at the foliage clumps, um, some go behind and get darker. Foliage that goes away from you and around behind the tree and foliage that you see underneath um, lighter foliage coming forward. And that's always dark and if you want to give your trees proper value and depth um, look at those darker shapes that go under behind and around the back and they will always be dark and they will usually be quite dark and I, I look for those opportunities basically to uh, give my painting some nice you know punch of deeper contrast and when I was painting this that was actually one of the fun most fun parts was picking out those darker value clumps of foliage 
under the boughs, behind the boughs, so on and so forth. It really gives that tree some depth and punch. So yeah, now you can see I've got my, my giant pine cone branch growing out of the mini pine tree. Looks kind of ridiculous right now. But I just decided I was gonna paint that tree up and through that branch no matter what, and I'll figure it out later. And I'm starting to pop in some of the branches. I ended up doing this whole painting with this brush. I probably, uh, you know, if I had wanted to get some more accurate detail and better forms on the thinner branches, I probably should have pulled out a rigger, but in the end I like doing this as a fairly uh, quick, loose study. And I guess this whole painting didn't take me probably more than uh, 30 minutes. And I didn't fiddle with it hardly at all when I brought it in the studio. I'm usually, usually like fiddling the fool out of these things, just messing with it in danger of overworking it. You know the drill. Everybody overworks, guys. Don't sweat it. Everybody overworks. I do it all the time. I was happy in that this stayed fairly fresh, quick, loose, didn't mess with it a lot, and that's a discipline I'm trying to learn, uh, aside from results. And here's just a little bit of real-time footage on putting in some of those branches. You know, one of the things I want to do, and I probably ought to make an episode on it, is I want to go out and do some quick tree studies, giving myself a clock limit to force myself to be more essential and simple with the shapes. Detail is all well and good, but when you're forced to paint big, simple, and essential, um, you just learn things. You learn how to simplify. And the best way to learn how to simplify is to force yourself. Just force yourself. Give yourself a time limit. These white pines have some very complex tangles of branches peeking through, you know, all this foliage. And now I'm just fiddling with details. Uh, I wanted to pop in some low lights just under a few of the clumps but I want to keep some of those clumps nice and simple because I'm, I'm loving the simplified shapes of some of it. And a lot of these pine boughs have sort of an upswept. They, they, they'll bend down, point down towards the ground, but then, you know, the tops of the boughs will have sort of an upswept look. So I'm trying to hint at that impression. And here is the finished tree. I really didn't mess with it a whole lot after I got it in the studio, so I'm kind of proud of myself for that. Um, I kept it somewhat loose. I mean, it's loose in a tight sort of way, if that makes any sense. Here you can see what I did with this branch. I just got a little bit of uh, acrylic white gu uh, acrylic gouache and made a little vignette around there just so it wasn't so confusing. As I mentioned before, I just decided to paint however it ended up going behind that branch and figuring it out later. Uh, my calligraphy still needs work. I had somebody on Instagram ask what that was. It uh, goes by several names. English round hand, copper plate, which I know those are slightly different. It's kind of hard to letter on this rough paper. And you remember that from the previous week's episode. So overall, I'm real happy with that page. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for subscribing and liking and thanks so much patrons for having my back, supporting this channel and making this content possible. We'll see everybody in the next episode. Bye-bye.